Good morning. I don't know about you, but I'm excited for the first snow, but after that, I'm not so much. My husband and daughter have been praying for snow for quite a few weeks. And today is her birthday, and so when she woke up, she was like, God heard me! And we said happy birthday (laughs) to that. But we're going to be talking about fear today. And if I'm honest with you, this is actually one of my signature sins. I'm a very fearful person, and I'll tell you more of that story, but I actually wanted to hear from all of you. So in groups, if you wouldn't mind discussing a couple questions. My first interaction with fear was the first time I ever went to a haunted house. My grandpa, I grew up in Chicago, so haunted houses around Halloween are a big deal. And they're really just to scare you. So my grandpa took my little sister and I and my dad, and I remember literally the entire time I was in my, like, this in my dad the whole time, and they were, and my dad just kept looking at my grandpa, this is my f- dad's father-in-law, this, you know, <laughs> and he's like, what did you do to my kids? And so from that point on, I could not watch anything scary. I can't even watch commercials on the screen, or I have to close my eyes, plug my ears, and start singing and telling my, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, because I just get terrified. And so what is your first experience with fear? In your groups, those around you, I would suggest maybe breaking out a little, but in those groups around you, would you share what is your first experience with fear? It could be as ridiculous as a haunted house. It could be something more significant than that. But in your groups, would you mind sharing that with one another? So there's a lot of good conversation. Can I, we hear some of the stories that you shared? Would you be willing to be a little vulnerable in that? What was, what's the first thing that happened to you that you can remember that made you fearful or afraid? Yes, darkness and not knowing what's there and what could get you. Monsters, Inc. has changed that forever for everyone. Yes, in the back over there. What, sorry, say it again. Spraying with color? Or spraining your toe. That makes more sense. Yes, (laughs) sorry about that. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Yes, in the back, go for it. (laughs) Yeah, when he was younger, he was scared of bad dreams. Anyone else? Thank you for sharing that. All right, so the next question I want us to process is, if you don't know, I like to process quite a bit. I work with students. My name's Allie Cranmer. And so I've realized to keep people's attention, we need to process. And so we're going to process a little bit more. The next question I have is, what are common fears today? So I I think it's great that you two answered over here because you're younger than many of us in here. And so those fears are so significant. And for many of us being adults or older than their age, our fears may look a little different. And so what are common fears in our world today? 
Think of the last year, the last month, the last week. What are those common fears? Will you share that within your group? Failure, yeah, that's great. Rejection, that's great. That's a good one too. Safety, er, safety, yes. Fear of losing someone. The fear of transition of power, yeah. Jim, did you have something? Fear of not being loved. Yep. Anyone, any others? You're, you fear your kids' faith roots aren't deep enough. I get that. Yep. I fear my own faith roots aren't deep enough, if I'm honest. Insignificance. Yes. Okay. So now, in your groups, what are common fears for you or your friends? that are happening to you currently. Would you mind sharing that in your groups right now? So I want you to keep thinking of those things throughout the rest of our day. So today's title is Perfect Love and Love Always Protects. I'm retitling to Perfect Love Casts Out Fear because perfect love is God. And if love always protects, well, God always protects us. But in a world that always gives us fear, how is that even possible? And so like I said earlier, I'm a very fearful person. It was this summer I took a group of 30 students, and myself included, six adults, to desperation. And it was there that the Lord confronted me head on. It was earlier in the year that Kevin started talking about the no fear, no fear, K-N-O-W, you know how to spell fear, and N-O, fear. And it was in that series that was the first time the Lord said, so let's start working on this for you. There was a three-second rule Kevin talked about, and I was pretty curious about that because often when I heard a three-second rule, it had to do with lust. So those that struggled with lust or pornography, you have three seconds to make a decision. Are you going to keep your eyes on that, or are you going to turn it to the Lord? But in any other circumstance, it never made sense, and nor had anyone ever explained that to me. But Kevin said, when it comes to fear, it's the same thing. You have three seconds to decide in that moment, are you going to dwell or are you going to turn? So like I said, I was at desperation, and the first two days we were there, our travel day and our first day, we had quite a few things happen, and I could feel it. I could feel the anxiety, my fears starting to come out. Oh, man, we have students that have gone on this trip for years. Oh, man, they are going to be comparing this trip to every other trip that they've gone on. Oh, man, I've just failed at this trip. We still have three more days of this trip. Lord, please just make this trip end early and let us just survive. And I felt it. I kept feeling it, and I kept feeling it. And it was our second day, that night, that the Lord said, three seconds. And I said, well, I've just spent 48 hours. He's like, three seconds. And so I knew that next morning that I needed to wake up and apologize to the group. Our students are pretty, like, they know that I struggle with fear. I talk about it on and off, and at different times in my life, it it has been a big deal, and other times it hasn't been a big deal, but this was a big deal moment for me. So we're sitting in a group, we're all holding hands, we're about to pray, and be sent off for our day of of a great, but, 
you know, conferences can be long when you're there all day. And I'm like, okay, guys, I need to apologize. I've been struggling with fear. And so as you've interacted with me the last two days, you have probably not interacted with patience, kindness, joy, none of the fruits of the Spirit. You've only interacted with Allie trying to prove herself, Allie trying to be boastful, possibly me being rude. And so I said that. And the students, I mean, we have great students here, so they're like, oh, Allie, totally forgiven. We prayed, we went on. Well, if the Lord wasn't going to hit me in the head anymore, he decided that our very first speaker was going to talk about fear. And I sat there, and you know that moment where it's like, all eyes are turning to you, but they're not, but you can like feel as if people grow eyes on the back of their head, and you're like, oh, great, it's that moment. And he decides to do an altar call for everybody that struggles with fear. And I'm sitting there, and I'm somewhat away from our group, so all, this, so all of our students could be more close towards the stage, so I'm sitting more towards the back. And I was like, great, what do I do in this? And the Lord gave me the question, what kind of shepherd are you? And I sat there, and I was like, but man, we, ju we just did this. We don't need to go through this again. And I could feel that as if the eyes on the back of their heads were getting bigger. Literally, none of them were probably thinking any of this, but to me, I, was, I felt like a spotlight was on me. And the question came up again, what kind of shepherd are you? A nice version of it. Sometimes when I hear the Lord, I've realized I make him rude. And the Lord's never rude. It's just my interpretation as if the Lord's ghetto to me. And so that's not really how he interacts. But I feel like he was saying, but what kind of shepherd are you, Allie? And so I stood up. And I went forward. And I wish I could say at this moment, the guy said, you know, I, he had struggled with fear. And he said, I know that the Lord has gifted me to cut off all fear from people and that they can walk in freedom from this point on. I wish that was true for me. I wish I could stand up here and say, I don't have fear. So today I'm going to release all of you from the, all the fear that the, you have ever had. And I'm going to declare that the Lord is good. And I truly believe that. But you will no longer have fear. But that's not part of my story. And so I want us to process together, what does it mean to fear? I think we have different definitions in the Bible because the Bible talks about how we should fear the Lord. And so that's confusing. But then we shouldn't be in fear. But the reality is when we fear the Lord, we're honoring, respecting, loving. But when we have other fears, there's anxiety. There's mistrust. There's pride. There's boastfulness. And so I want to read 1 Corinthians 13 to you because those are the verses we've been sitting in for a while in the auditorium. And then we're going to read another passage that is an incredible story from a children's Bible. So if you'll read 1 Corinthians 13 with me. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices when the truth wins out. Love always protects. It never loses faith. It is always hopeful. It endures through every circumstance. Perfect love casts out all fear. It says that in 1 John 4. Perfect love. What a great definition of perfect love, huh? So I want to read a story of the storm, when Jesus calms the storm. I'm using the children's Bible version because often I think we can sometimes get lost in the lack of words in our regular Bibles, and the children's does such a great job of describing and so what I would like is we're going to go into some conversation afterwards in our groups, but would you imagine what character you are in this story? And imagine the things you are thinking, the things you are feeling, and what's happening around you, and then we'll talk about that a little more. But this is called The Captain of the Storm. The sun was going down and the air was warm and still. Let's go across the lake, Jesus said to his friends. Jesus had been helping people all day. And now he was tired. So they left the crowds at the shore and set out in a small fishing boat. Jesus climbed into the boat to take a nap. As soon as his head touched the pillow, 
he fell asleep. It was a beautiful evening. A gentle breeze rustled the sails. The friends were chattering happily as they headed out to the middle of the lake. Everything was perfect. Just right and nice. They were only about halfway across when out of nowhere, whirling winds swept across the lake, fierce and strong, like a hurricane. A blinding flash of lightning lit up the sky. Thunder roared right overhead. The storm blew the water into a towering wave that hurled and l- the little boat up and down and up and down and then sent it hurtling, crashing back down, 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 down. The fishing boat was blown. It was tossed, it was turned back and forth and up and down and left and right and round and round. And in the middle of the storm, Jesus was sleeping. Now, Jesus' friends had been fishermen all their lives, but in all their years fishing on this lake, they had never once seen a storm like this. No matter how hard they struggled with their ropes, their sails, they couldn't control their boat. This storm was just too big for them. But the storm wasn't too big for Jesus. Help, they screamed. Wake up, quick, Jesus. Jesus opened his eyes. Rescue us, save us, they shrieked. Don't you care? Of course Jesus cared. And this was the very reason he had come, to rescue them and to save them. Jesus stood up and spoke to the storm. Hush, he said. That's all. And the strangest thing happened. The wind and the waves recognized Jesus' voice. They listened to Jesus. And they did what he said. Immediately the wind stopped. The water calmed down. It glittered innocently in the moonlight and lapped quietly against the side of the boat as if nothing had ever happened. The little boat bobbed gently up and down. There was a deep stillness and a great quiet all around. Then Jesus turned to his wind-torn friends. Why were you scared? He said. Did you forget who I am? Did you believe your fears instead of me? Jesus' friends were quiet. As quiet as the wind and the waves, and into, his, into their hearts came a different kind of storm. What kind of man is this? They asked themselves anxiously. Even the winds and the waves obey him, they asked. They didn't realize yet that Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus' friends had been so afraid, they had only seen the big waves. They had forgotten that if Jesus was with them, then they had nothing to be afraid of, no matter how small their boat or how big the storm. So in your groups, will you talk about what character did you identify with and what were you feeling in the midst of that story? All right, as that character, what were you afraid of? Can you share that now? What were you afraid of in that story? Okay, can I get a couple of responses? Who did you identify with and what were you afraid of? It could be the obvious, it could be not so obvious, but what would you have been afraid of if you were that character? Yeah, that's a great one. Yes. We would be afraid of that Jesus isn't really Jesus. That's great. Jim, go for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's great, Jim. Did everyone hear what Jim said? Okay, Jim, let me give you the mic for the rest of the time. Go for it. You'd be scared of the big storm? Yeah. Oh, I would have been so scared of that big storm, too, especially on a boat. Huh. Anyone else? Yeah. So the initial fear really gets us scared, but when we see Jesus and how he interacts in it, then we can see it differently, but it's the initial fear that can usually captivate us and capture us. Yeah. Molly, do you have something? Sinking, yeah. I agree. Drowning is one of my fears. Okay, sorry, let me hear you. I can't hear you from back or over there. Yeah. He said in the storm he would be afraid that he would probably st sink. I think that is a great one. Anyone else? Mm, the fear as being seen as fearful. Yes, that is a great one. Yep. The fear of the unexpected in the storm and not knowing what's going to happen next. Those are all great. Anyone else? So I love this story. Two reasons. First, it is a story that we get to see Jesus as completely human. He's exhausted. He wants to go to sleep. So he goes and finds a quiet place and immediately falls asleep. I love that. Because in a world where everything's chaotic and we're told we need to do everything, Jesus is like, guys, seriously, I just need to go to sleep right now. Give me the pillow. And I love that in the children's version it says, his head hits the pillow and he falls asleep. How many times do, are we like that when we're just so exhausted? So I love that part. And then you have this other part of it where Jesus all of a sudden not all of a sudden, but it seems all of a sudden is God. And he can stop a storm. And he declares it. And all he has to say is one word, and the storm stops. And this is what God's been teaching me with my own fears. That often, it's exactly what you said. It's the immediate, my immediate decision on am I going to be captured by the storm is the thing exactly what Jim said. Am I going to actually elevate my fear over who God is because God is perfect love and perfect love casts out all fear. So am I going to sit under the perfect love of his shelter as him being my rock, my fortress, my refuge? Or am I going to cower under the fear that tells me there is no way that your God is that powerful? And so I sit in this teetering. I sit on the boat and I wonder, Jesus, come on, do something. And Jesus is like, I have the word. I have it. Sit under my shelter. And I go back and forth and back and forth on that boat. And it's been this year that the Lord has said, who are you aligning with in your fears, Allie? Who is it? In his loving and compassionate, perfect love that isn't jealous, that is so patient, that isn't rude, that doesn't boast, but loves me deeply. And he says, here's my shelter. Will you find it under me? Will you define what's happening through my lens? And so that's my question for you today. There's a couple different stations. I really wanted to create a place that there was a shelter because sometimes we need to see the physical representation because the abstract of Jesus being a shelter, although theoretically is great and great comfort, but we need to see a shelter where we can actually say, this is my fear, I need to write it out. It needs to be put into the light so it has no more power. And so there's a shelter over there with, with dry erase markers that you can mark that whole board up if you need to, want to if you're being invited to. And then over here, there are different cards that maybe they're specific things. So as you go over here and you decide to write out whatever it is, you need to exchange that for the truth of who the Lord is, that he is my rock, he is my refuge, he is peace, he is the prince of peace, he is the Emmanuel, he will never leave me nor forsake me, he did not create me to be a person that is fearful, that he is perfect in his love, that he will love me unconditionally, that I don't have to be afraid, I don't have to be ashamed. All of those things are over there. But my hope is we're going to take a couple seconds and just breathe. 
And will you let the Lord speak to you in this? All week I'd been wrestling, how do we talk about this? And then Thursday happened. And I said, all right, Lord, how do we really talk about this? So how does the Lord talk to you about this today? Will you pray with me? And then we will worship. And during worship, you can respond how it is, how you feel the Lord is inviting you to respond. Father, thank you that your perfect love casts out all fear. Father, thank you that you are a refuge. You are a strength. You are our ever-present help. And no storm is too big for you, Lord. And so, gracious Father, will we see the storms that you need to calm in our lives? And will we lay those storms before you today? Bless us and keep us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.